Hello guys, this is me Dr. JK and today we will start, you know, the tumors, the odontogenic tumors and in odontogenic tumors we will start the tumors of odontogenic epithelium with odontogenic ectomies and chyme with or without dental heart issues. So basically they will be mixed tumors. In our previous lectures we have studied about the tumors which had only epithelium without odontogenic ectomies and chyme that included the ameloblastoma, the, uh, you know, uh, the calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumors, adenomatite odontogenic tumors, and squamous odontogenic tumors. But here we have, you know, epithelium as well as the ectomesenchyme. So they will be mixed tumors. It will include ameloblastic fibroma, ameloblastic fibro odontoma, ameloblastic odontoma, and odontomas. Right. And today we will discuss about ameloblastic fibroma. So it is, you know, here we have ameloblastic fibroma, a true mixed tumor. It is a mixed tumor, right? Because it includes or it has, you know, epithelium and ectomesenchyme. So it will be true mixed tumor in which the epithelial and mesenchymal tissues are both neoplastic. And it is an uncommon tumor, basically. If you talk about clinical features, it is most commonly present in young patients first two decades of life is more prone to this disease it is most commonly present in males and if the lesion is smaller in size it will be asymptomatic if larger uh, the tumor it will be associated with the swelling of the jaws and may cause facial asymmetry and the posterior mandible is more commonly involved if you talk about the ameloblastic fibroma there is another variant that is extra osseous variant of uh, Ameloblastic fibroma that is gingival soft tissue have only recently been described but this appears to represent a rare phenomenon. Here we have you know the posterior part of the mandible will be more commonly involved. Okay, If you talk about radiographic features it will be unilocular or multilocular radiolucent lesions. The margins tend to be well defined and they may have a sclerotic borders and it may be associated with unerupted tooth in 75% of cases. If they are larger in size and cases that involve a considerable portion of the body and the centigramas of the mandible have been reported. So if we talk about a larger lesions then they will be inv uh, involving the posterior part of the mandible. Here we have uh, you know unerupted second molar associated with the Ameloblastic fibroma is it is the radiolucent lesion over here. Okay, now we'll discuss about histopathological features: solid soft tissue mass with a smooth outer surfaces. A definite capsules may or may not be present. Okay, so you should keep this point in your mind. There may be a capsule, and there may not be a capsule. If you talk about microscopically. Uh, they will contain cell-rich mesenchymal tissue resembling the primitive dental papilla admixed with proliferating odontogenic epithelium. The latter may have one of two patterns, both of which are usually present in any given case. The most common epithelial pattern consists of long, narrow cords of odontogenic epithelium. Here we have long, narrow cords of odontogenic epithelium and it is cell-rich connective tissue and these are the cords of epithelium and they will be anastomosing to each other right here you can see okay here we have the narrow cords of the odontogenic epithelium often in an anastomosing arrangement okay these cords are usually only two cells in thickness and are composed of cuboidal or columnar cells so the cords will be two cell in thickness and they will be cuboidal or columnar cells Okay, in other uh, you know pattern, the epithelial cells form small discrete islands that resemble the follicular stage of the developing enamel. Here we have small islands. You can see here, right? And there are you know basophilic epithelial islands, basophilic epithelial islands with peripheral nuclear palisading. The nuclei will be in you know parallel to each other. Nuclei will be in parallel to each other. Okay, these show peripheral columnar cells which surrounds a mass of loosely arranged epithelial cells that resemble stelia reticulum. You know the peripheral columnar cells, here there will be columnar cells. Right, columnar cells over here. And 
uh, you know, they will be surrounding the mass of loosely arranged epithelial cells that resemble stellate reticulum. In contrast to the follicular type of ameloblastoma, these follicular islands in the ameloblastic fibroma seldom demonstrate micro cyst formation. So here, you know, there will be seldom cyst formation here. As you can see, no cyst here. So there will be, you know, seldom cyst formation as compared to that of the ameloblastoma where cyst formation was there. Okay, if we talk about treatment and prognosis, you know, it is an ongoing topic of debate. Conservative excision is the treatment of choice. Resection including 0.5 to 1 centimeter of clinically sound bone is advocated. Recurrence in these cases depends upon the com completeness of the excision. Uh, you know, there is a problem of excision because it may be, you know, the capsule may be present and it may be non-capsulated as well. So that is why that may be a s one reason of uh, its difficulty. Okay, the highest recurrence rate, forty-three point five percent, was recorded in series of cases. And if the lesion is smaller and non-aggressive, uh, the conservative excision will be done. But more aggressive surgical excision should be done for the you know uh, the lesions which which have the history of recurrence. Okay smaller the lesion we will do conservative excision if there is recurrent lesion we will go for more aggressive surgical excision approximately 45 percent of the cases of the rare ameloblastic fibrosarcoma develop in the settings of the recurrent ameloblastic fibroma so uh, this is a bit dangerous because there may be you know ameloblastic fibrosarcoma develop in 45 percent of cases which is uh, you know a rare uh, rare lesion that is ameloblastic fibrous sarcoma we will dis we'll discuss about that as well so that's it about this lecture these are the references of this lecture hopefully you enjoy this lecture if you enjoy this lecture please subscribe to my channel and we will come up, come up with more and more videos on oral pathology and till my next lecture take care and bye bye